Hello and welcome to another episode of Sunday Quickie, which is kind of a mix between Sunday Quickie and a more traditional repair video. I did one of these a few weeks ago where I repaired the Atari 2600 that was broken again, and you guys seem to like the format, so I have another video just like that. So just to recap, just in case you haven't seen that previous video, I have a, a bunch of little smaller repair projects that I've just been meaning to do for a long time. And it's kind of like, oh, I guess I could just, you know, do it off camera, not really enough content for like a full scripted video, but using the Sunday quickie formula, which is me just rambling on and never shutting up and doing things off script and in real time, seems perfect for it. I do have something a bit special today, more than a broken Atari 2600 I don't have a particular emotional attachment to, apart from the fact that it makes me angry because it keeps breaking. I have my childhood PlayStation 1. How does that look? Hopefully the camera is not overexposing it. So here's a fun story. <laughs> so as a 30 year old, it may come as no surprise to some of you that the PlayStation 1 was my childhood console. This one specifically was it. I got this when I was eight years old. So this is the slim PS1, not the bigger one. Uh, growing up, my parents have a pretty large lounge room. It's much larger than my lounge room. And they had a very small TV cabinet. So small that there was no space for the PlayStation to sit. It had to go on the floor. But the thing is, because the lounge room was so big, you kind of had to put the PlayStation, you know, in the middle of the floor so the controller's cable would reach all the way to the couch. Just kind of the way it was. And, you know, I played it every day for years, a very long time. I bought a bunch of games when they were cheap. I sort of got this in the PlayStation 2 era more than the OG PS1 era, maybe five or so years before. Anyway, long story short, my sister one day tripped over it and broke the top lid off, which is fair enough. It was in the middle of the floor after all. So obviously with the any PlayStation, the lid doesn't actually have any electronics in it. However, the PlayStation will not spin a disc because the lid closes, it activates a button, and then that's how the PlayStation knows that the lid is closed. So the PlayStation was still working, just the lid was completely snapped off. So we ended up, I think we just ended up getting some blue tack or something and you know, basically the, the button was permanently pushed down or something like that and it worked. Fast forward a few more years, I'm in my late tweens, early teens, I was probably somewhere between 11 and 13 years old. Uh, it's when I started getting an interest in, in electronics and specifically Ben Heck. I used to follow him way back before he was the YouTube superstar he is these days. I used to follow him like on his blog and his podcast, which I wish he still did. Uh, regardless, he was famous. It's in fact how I became uh, aware of him was he would grab consoles and handheld them. He would, like like a PS1, for example, he would make a handheld version of it using, you know, this is before you could easily go out and buy LCD screens. It was really cool and absolutely fascinated me. So I thought, well, don't really play my PlayStation 1 anymore. It's just sitting in its box. I want to do the same as Ben Heck. Basically, I got as far as disassembling it and being, you know, 11 to 13 years old, I can't remember exactly how old, didn't really know what to do from that point onwards and shoved it all back in the box in pieces. And it's been in that box, in that state, ever since. I have i don't think I've ever taken it out. It's probably been in this box for nearly 20 years. So thanks to that Ben heck, today I'm gonna to attempt to put it back together. So like I said, a child version of me put this back in here, or at least a very young teenager. So. Who knows what's missing? Who knows if it's, if it's complete? Who knows if I broke something in the process and it won't work anyway? So not really sure where I'm going with this video. I just want to see if I can put it back, to, back together and maybe get it working again. So without further ado, let's open the box. And I swear I have not looked in this box at all. The camera is as high up as it can go on this, on my glide gear here and it's still not enough room. I guess I could have increased the, the height of the glide gear, but that's neither here or there. All right, so we have a cable. A cable that's in pretty good condition, I might add. We have 
Another cable. <laughs> I just got rid of a bunch of my cables. I went into a local uh, gaming shop here called um, Beyond Retro. And I, I literally cleared out all my extras, mostly composite cables, because, you know, of my big endeavor to be on RGB only. I literally walked in with a plastic bag full of cables and I was like, do you want this? You know, like, with the idea of selling it to them, but I was totally willing to just give it to them if they didn't want it to have, you know, give me any money for it. They kind of didn't, they gave me a $10 credit. So I bought something which maybe a future video, we'll see, but anyway. Um, but anyway, that's my funny story about cables. Open up this bloody box and there's two more. All right, we have a power adapter, handy. And we have some tape. <laughs> we got the uh, Animal Club reserved to senior products. Why the hell that's in there? I've got no idea, but it is. Oh, we have various manuals. So we've got oh, something to send to Futuretronics. Didn't Futuretronics come up in a video recently? I can't remember what it was. I feel like I was talking about Futuretronics recently. Um, I guess it would be for this. This is the packaging for one of those memory cards that had multiple memory card, you know, multiple, uh, how do I even say it? And instead of just like being one memory card with like 15 blocks or whatever, there was like four of them. So that's the, uh, the hold select, press L1, left R2, right. That was, um, that was how you change between the memory cards. That's not my handwriting either. That must be my dad's. So look, there's some other, so that was, I'm pretty sure that was the memory card. I don't think it works anymore. Uh, like anything Futuretronics. And there's some other crap you could have bought that would probably also not now work. We've got the manual and we've got a registration card, which looks to be filled out. Looks, you can tell that's been perforated. So yeah, I don't, you know what? I think I sent it off way too late, hoping I was gonna get a demo disc or something, maybe partially as a joke. I don't think anything ever arrived. Um, we've got more stuff in here, it keeps going. So there is the, the, uh, the instruction manual for the memory card. We have a receipt from Target. Green memory card one, $10. Book, $10. I think that's my OG memory card. Um, it was like a legit memory card. So what's the date on that? 2002. Oh, that's, sorry, that's not even in camera. Yeah, 2002. So I still got the receipt. Um, don't think I can take it back though. And oh, cool. It's the, um, it's the original Kmart pamphlet for when I bought the PlayStation. This is right down nostalgic memory lane today. So that's also not my handwriting. I believe that's my dad's because he helped me buy this. In fact, he paid for most of it, even though we split it. He definitely paid more than I did. Um, was $154, now $138. Although this is not the PlayStation we bought. So obviously the total there, 164, that must be including the memory card or something or in a game because we wanted Gran Turismo, which we played the living God out of, by the way. Hey, V Rally 3, I'm pretty sure I found that in an op shop the other day. I think that was V Rally 3, coming with that pink PS2, which we found, I made a post about it. Um, yeah, 89 bucks. What else we got on here? You could buy a 10 pack of Sanyo CDRs for $9. You can get Toy Story on DVD for $60. Oh, it's like, oh, it's a box set. It comes with Toy Story 2 and extra features. But still, get Wiggles on Safari with Steve Irwin. Sorry, none of this is even in, in camera. I'm just, I'm just pissing myself like an excited dog right now. There you go, Wiggles on Safari with Steve Irwin. $15.49, that's a bargain. Yeah, nice, so. So as I said, it was mostly the, uh, the PS2 that was in its prime in 2002. It had been out a year in Australia, I believe, but PS1 was still kicking around. So like I was gonna say, we didn't end up buying this bundle. We drove down to the, the Midland Kmart, if I'm gonna be specific, and they had this, oh man, this camera is really not high enough. <laughs> they had this bundle instead. Sorry, it's upside down. 
but it came with Monsters Inc. Scare Island and Atlantis The Lost Empire. I think I played that maybe once or twice. Played the living heck out of Scare Island. And for a while I didn't have a memory card, so I'd pretty much get home from school or whatever and I'd sit there and play as much of Scare Island as I could before having to turn off the PlayStation for the nightly news. And uh, yeah, I'd just lose, lose all my progress. Uh, but then one day my dad did come home with a memory card, that green one that you saw there in the receipt, which I'm pretty sure I still have. I've got most of my stuff from my childhood. Anyway, wasn't that fun. Let's look at the PlayStation itself. Oh no, we have a little baggie. Oh, screws. I kept the screws. Good going, young Brendo. Good going. Either that or my mum or dad were like, what the hell are you doing? And maybe put the screws in. Anyway, looks like there's something else in there, but we have the PlayStation itself. Is that, is that another receipt? Possibly for the PlayStation itself. Yeah, Kmart Midland. Disney PS1 bundle, $189. So I guess that's probably why we didn't get the, the memory card that day, because that probably put us well over budget. But there we go, what's the date on that? Yeah, so that was on the 20th, a month before, 2002. What was the date on that one? Oh, the second. Oh, it was only like a week later. About a week. It felt like way longer in my memory, because you know, your memories are warped as a kid. Felt like months. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't, it was like a week later. That's so funny. Anyway, let's have a look at the PlayStation itself. So let's just get rid of that. Get rid of the uh, Animal Club tape. <laughs> that's, it's got glitter on it and everything. That's, that's something. I don't know what that is, but it's something. And as we can see, the lid is completely broken off. Yeah. So, it looks like I've made an effort to try and reattach everything, but only two of the screws are in. Looks like there's something else in here as well. It looks like there's, I don't even know what that is. Some sort of mount or bracket. See, my love of putting things in Ziploc bags started a long way. I've got a collection of Ziploc bags here, which I always put screws and whatever else in them. Pretty organized when it comes to that sort of thing. Wait, let me get my little, uh, my little magnetic screw tray out. Ooh, keep that away from the, the magnet on the bottom of that. So we've got, I don't even know what that is. I think that's actually from a controller. That's my first guess anyway. Then we've got one small black screw and two longer silver screws. Very good. All right, let's have a look at the PlayStation. All right, apologies for my hair being a little bit wet. I just washed my hair before I started this video. It really needed a wash. I'm also in my pajamas, so yeah, really professional but you know it's a YouTube channel about retro gaming so I guess who cares anyway um, let's pull these screws out and inspect any possible damage I don't remember it being damaged but it's possible that I've inadvertently done something and we remembered so that screw is yes yeah, so obviously those silver ones are for these other holes Maybe that black one's for there. I've actually, um, apart from the fact that I disassembled this when I was a kid, I've never actually really been into one of these before. I've never had to. They've, they're pretty reliable. They've always just worked. So that is that. Let's turn it around. Okay. And you know what? After all that fanfare, it's not even that disassembled. <laughs> Looks like I have, oh, we do have something broken there though. So let's just unplug this for the moment and pull this up. Let's have a look under this shield. Oh, there's another thing there. Let's pull that up. Definitely inspect the, uh, the ribbon cable. I can imagine that is 
potentially something I would have broken. There's a little potentiometer there when the, uh, the laser starts to fail, that's good. Oh, there we go. So, quick look at the disk drive. Well, the, the drive, the laser assembly, I should say. It looks pretty good. Doesn't look like I got too far with disassembling that. Cool, let's put that to the side. Mm, yeah, so a lot of this is bent out of shape. Whoa, it's way bent out of shape. What in the flip? And then we've got this guy here, which is just sort of floating in the breeze. Ah, God. Okay, I see what's happened. So obviously this screw is, you know, under this warranty label. Guarantee void if the seal on the PlayStation console is damaged or removed. You can feel that. Instead of just screwing through the hole or pulling the sticker off, I've just like forcibly ripped the thing open. That's not good. You can see the plastic there is looking pretty worse for wear as well. Damn, young Brendan. You brutal. <laughs> Um, looks like this, nothing here looks out of the ordinary. It's just the case. I'm glad I didn't break the circuit board or anything because, you know, I was looking at these photos of Ben Heck and he's, you know, obviously cutting the circuit board up and obviously I figured that I just did not know what to do and didn't attempt anything, which is good. So, oh, try and get this screw out. Bit of a lost cause, unfortunately. Oh, that's in there really tight. I might need my pliers. Let's get one of these jobbies into it. Hold it semi awkwardly. There we go, buddy. Out we come. All right. So we have another piece of bent metal. So I've just like ripped this open and it's taken a bunch of the shield and that screw post with it. Goodness gracious. But if that's the worst of the damage, then Cool, I guess. Um, should really take a thumbnail at this point. <laughs> Might just quickly do that with my phone. Let's make this really clickbaity. Let's make this really look horrible. No, that doesn't need to go backwards. That would be, that'd be a bit too far, I think. There we go. Oh, yeah, that looks, that looks awful. That's gonna make it click on the video, isn't it? I reckon it will. And then we just need one further away. Let's just give ourselves some options. Go on a bit closer. Don't worry, little buddy. We're gonna fix you right up. I love the processing on the Pixel. The photos on this thing are mint. Like I just bought a brand new camera and I'll talk a bit about that at the end of the video. And it's like, just cause of the software, it just feels like this sometimes takes better photos. I know it's not like it's in your head, but you know, best camera on you is the one, well, sorry, I should say the best camera you can use is the one that's on you at the time that you need to take a photo of something, isn't it? So anyway, let's um, get on back to this. Um, I'll just have a closer inspection on the bottom. Definitely worried about the back where that screw post is. Doesn't look like there's any cracks or anything. It's obviously just a bit scratched, but that's obviously just a grounding post. Um, yeah, there's like scratch. Oh man, there's like a big gouge there. 
Is that going through a trace? Have a look at that. Don't think that's going through a trace. Doesn't look like there's anything there. Ooh, we've got a few more marks over here too. They look like they are going through traces. Really tiny ones too. Oh, that looks pretty bad. What's that connected to? God knows. The PS1 sort of getting to that point where um, the electronics are a bit beyond my, my talents, unfortunately. Yeah, if those traces there have a gouge mark in them, then it may be all bets off. So you can see around there, it's pretty gnarly. Oh, that's the same post we we're looking at before, but everything around there seems intact. There's no components missing or ripped off or anything like that. All right, we've got some dust bunnies and stuff in here. Let's take care of those. Do it away from the work area. I'm not going to bust out the isopropyl alcohol or anything just yet. It's, it all seems pretty clean. It has just been sitting in a box. And the box hasn't been in a garage or anything. It's been in a wardrobe and been in several different retro gaming rooms because, you know, the box still looks good on a shelf. All right, I'm pretty happy with all that apart from the, the out of bent shape RF shields and whatnot, but that shouldn't be a, a massive issue. I think we're just about ready for a test. So I guess a, a minor objective of this video would be to get the, the lid reattached and working as it should. But before we look into that, we should make sure that the, uh, the PlayStation actually boots and plays a game. How did that go in? Something like that. Yeah. Ooh, don't push down too hard. <laughs> oh man, that's, that is so bad. But you know, I was a kid. Don't hate me. You gotta learn your way somehow. Oh, I didn't even look at this, did I? Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Okay. Pretty simple on the inside. Must give Sony that one. Uh, how did this go on? Oh, there we go, a little screw post. Doesn't help that there's a, <laughs> a munted piece of metal right there. There's little uh, shock posts for it to go on. Shock posts probably isn't the right word, but you know what I mean. All right, let's get, all, let's get this all hooked up and uh, see if it plays a disc. All right. So that's the unbutton there. And then the lid connects with that little black switch. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll just see if it turns on first and then we'll, uh, assuming it does, we'll plug in a disc and we'll see what happens. So let's plug that guy in. All right, moment of truth. Hopefully you guys can see the monitor there. Just make sure there's no glare on it. We have a green light. Do we have, oh, yay, we get a video output. Nice. Cool. All right, let's plug a disc in and, oh, well, I'll be able to push that button with a disc on it. I guess we'll find out, won't we? So I'm going to test with Croc. You see that? And that reflection's annoying. I know it works because I was playing it last night. So let's plug that on. Oh yeah, you still can touch the button. Just make sure I don't shear my finger off with the shear the tip of my finger off with the disc spinning. So let's hold that little jobby down and okay, cool, it's spinning. There's a nice breeze on my index finger. There's no audio, obviously. I don't have any speakers attached, but we can test that later on. And the aspect ratio is kind of weird. <laughs> this is squished. I think that's just the monitor though. I don't think that's the PlayStation. Oh, come on little PlayStation, you can do it. Please hurry up, my finger's getting tired. 
Hey, there we go. I think it's launching the game. Um, don't have a controller attached. We can uh, we can sort that out. I've also got a memory card there as well. So we'll just confirm that the memory card slots are working. I'll just let it play until it gets to the menu screen because there's 3D graphics in that and it actually makes the PlayStation work. I think in these intro sequences, it's just playing videos. So if we confirm that it can get to that and not glitch out running real time gameplay, even though it is just the menu, I think that'll be a pretty good indication that the PlayStation still works. Oh, of course it's playing a cutscene. It's a pretty long cutscene too. All right, I'll just, uh, I'll just take that at face value and uh, go get a controller. All right, so for extra nostalgic fun, I believe this is the controller that it came with. I'm not entirely sure. It's definitely dirty enough to have been mine when I was a grubby kid. Don't remember there being any damage though. So it is definitely the one that came with PS uh, PlayStation Slims. But anyway, I also think this is my original memory card. It's missing its label, but it is a legit Sony one there. I don't know if you can see that in, in, the, in the light, but um, it's the only green memory card I could find. Looks like the screw's a bit rusted. I don't know if this is mine or not. Anyway, I've got no idea if this one works or not. I just found it in my memory card drawer. So if, if it's not working, I do have one that is confirmed to working. And I know the controller works too, because I was using it yesterday to play Croc. So let's plug that in. That's a pretty tight fit actually. Turn her on. And uh, it thinks the lid is open, so it should let us browse the memory card. See if there's anything on it. Okay. If there is anything on it, it's, or if it is working, it's blank. Otherwise it's not showing anything. So let's turn that off. Let's plug in this other one, which I know definitely does work. I don't remember the label coming off. I feel like that's, that's something I would remember. It's the only green memory card I could find though. It did say green on the, on, on the receipt, didn't it? Eh, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's plug this guy in. And again, we'll see if it works. Oh, and the controller obviously works too. I didn't even think about that. I'm using it right now. All right, cool. Yes, we have files. So, Let's um, let's just get into some gameplay. I just want to make sure that it can definitely churn a game through on its systems. I won't make you sit through the intro again. All right, I guess this is a good place to pick it up from. My finger is getting very tired <laughs> holding this in place. So obviously the next step will be to see if we can, you know, reassemble the top lid. Not really sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I don't know, let's just start a level. Oh, my finger is getting really tired actually. I guess I should stop whinging. No one watches these videos to watch me whinge. Yeah, there we go, it works. Cool. All right, let's, um, let's see what we can do about this lid. Still gonna work? Hey, it's like loaded in the RAM. Nice. Where do I go? Whoa, it's going so slow though. I imagine that's just because it's not streaming off the disc anymore. If you could hear audio. Oh, I died. Well, that sounds weird, but I think it's okay. Anyway, enough of that. Let's try and get this lid back on. Okay, um, let's try and get this back on. So obviously we're missing a screw post. Um, let's just see if it goes back on. All right, we've definitely got a little bit of a bowel there. It looks like a tasty sandwich I would love to bite into right now because I am hungry. <laughs> I think it's, it's because these are all warped out of shape from my pure child strength, just going and ripping the PlayStation in half. At least that's how I imagine it went. So 
So let's grab the old pliers again. In fact, we'll get the needle nose pliers this time. So we have a bit more control. Let's move that out of the way. So, I mean, how's that even supposed to go into place? It's so warped out of position, I can't even tell, but let's just, it's obviously keeping it from going, the lid from going into place. Let's just bend it out of the way just so it's, because obviously the uh, the screw post is a goner. I mean, we could glue it back into position. Fairly trivial to do, but I think we can do without it. Let's just try and flatten that out and then put this guy back into place. I don't know if that's supposed to, oh, man, I should have like looked up some disassembly videos. At least with this one, we can tell because it's mirrored to this one. So we know that one should just uh, go back down into place like so. Maybe, hopefully. There we go. Not sure about that one. But let's see if the lid will now go on flush. So well engineered. I'm actually, I'm just a bit gobsmacked. Just never really taken much attention to the old childhood favorite. All right, is that going on? No, it's not. Ow! Just nipped the end of my thumb on that. Uh -huh. So it's still not going down. It's going down on this side, not this side. Possibly because of this as well. Oh man, it's like really out of shape. Like me. <laughs> um, really glad I didn't break those traces as a youngin. That would have been problematic. Oh, man, even that's like bent out of shape as well. This whole back end is just a mess. It's like a car crash or a car that has crashed. And I'm like a person who fixes crashed cars. What do you call that? A bender mender, <laughs> bender mender. Um, yeah, where's this little? Oh, okay, so that's supposed to go inwards. <laughs> just making it even worse. Tempted just to cut it off. In all honestly, in all, in all honesty, um, I reckon this is still a problem. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting close. Oh, there we go. Ow, I just nipped my finger on that thing again. <laughs> God damn it. All right, let's, um, yeah, I think if we start putting screws back in, that one should all just form back into place. So let's do exactly that. Starting at the side. Ah! Actually, we'll start on this side because that's the side that's most out of place. All right, I got most of the screws in and the bloody flaps like stuck in position backwards. So I guess we'll unscrew all these again and make sure that's suitably flat. You know, I think there's something wrong with that. I can't really show it on the downward cam, but <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> oh, you know what, who cares? <laughs> I don't care. It's not a problem. Not a, a bad problem anyway. Who cares if the, the memory card slot is a bit weird. We're all a little bit weird on the inside, aren't we? All right, um, not entirely sure what goes into that hole. I guess I could look it up. The black one's too long and the, the civil one feels too long. I think I just said that the wrong way around. The um, the black one's too short and the silver one is too long. Well, it feels like it's too long. I don't want to force it in there just in case it screws into something like it shouldn't like 
a circuit board. But anyway, that's looking pretty good. Obviously, there's still a little bit of a bow in the middle here because of that broken post, but that's okay. And we have something <laughs> weird going on there, but like I said, I kind of just don't care. So let's inspect this. Ah, see there is bits that are like snapped off and stuff. So obviously that thing that keeps wrecking my finger goes into that trough. So are those bits there snapped off? They need to be longer hooks. I think that's what's going on. Hmm. Well, I do have a 3D printer, don't I? Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might go have some dinner because I'm hungry, first off, and then I'll do a bit of research into what we can do about these, these things here that are broken. So this may not be a one and done video. This might be over multiple sessions. That's a, that's a first for a Sunday quickie, definitely. Hey, look, I completely fixed it. Uh, nah, just kidding. Got you though. Probably not, considering that one is far cleaner than this. So I've had some food <clears throat> and had a bit of a think and 3D printing something to repair that, to slot into there, probably goes a little bit beyond the scope of a Sunday quickie sort of video. I'm sorry to say. I looked into it, I even got as far as firing Blender up and, you know, uh, measuring the, the diameter of that little nub there, but the more, the more I look at it, the more I realized how complicated it is. For one, it's on a bit of a curve. Two, I haven't quite figured out how, obviously that's half a hole that's been ripped off. I think there's more to the mechanism than I believe, just so I can sit in there and it's supposed to somehow slot onto those two nubs, which I'm not sure how you do that, considering it is the exact same width. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, just gonna go back to the fact that it's well beyond the scope of this video. So I'm sorry about that, but I did put some time and thought into it and it's just a lot. So <laughs> gotta leave it, but we did learn a lot. A, we learned that it does still work. B, I was able to get it back into a state similar to the day that my sister tripped over it. <laughs> so that's a win. I feel like there's more we can do with this. I feel like it will make a comeback, but for now, I think I'm gonna leave the project at its current state. So there is one thing I wanna mention. I, this video has turned out to be much longer than I thought it was going to be, that's a, that's another reason that I'm calling it here. But if you are still watching, there's something I want to announce. So I will be making a main mainline announcement of this in the coming weeks. But basically I've launched a new YouTube channel and it has absolutely nothing to do with retro gaming. I, I should just get that out of the way from the start. So Retro Game On isn't going anywhere, it's so ingrained into my life. I've been running this for 10 years now. I don't think it's ever going anywhere. I think I'll be going before the channel goes. So don't worry about that. But a lot of channels I've been watching in the most recent while have been about history and exploration and adventure, just basically been out there making videos, talking to the camera. And I've always watched those videos and go, wow, that would be so cool to do. And it took me far too long to have the realization that I totally could be making those sort of videos if I want. So I bought a new camera recently. I've got, a, what is it, a Sony A7C? Yep, that's what it's called, Alpha 7C. Brand new camera, has inbuilt stabilization and other features. Bought this new microphone that you may have seen in the last couple of videos, which I'm still working out. I have to muck around with the sound settings on the camera and make them work a bit better, but that'll be happening in due time. So I've done a soft launch of this channel. I've released one video. I'll be making the main announcement when there's two videos. So basically I'm calling it Brendan's Odyssey. And I'm still not entirely sold on that name, to be honest, but I had to get in a little bit of a, a retro gaming quip in there if I could. Basically in the pilot episode, I'm calling it, we 
go on a bit of adventure to go look at this really old bridge that's literally made out of tree logs that's like 15 kilometers 20 minutes away from a major city Perth it's just it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere it's just completely untouched really close to my house I thought it would just be a good way to just test out the equipment test out the format so there's just obviously from making that video I've learned a lot of new things a lot of things I want to change the next video is going to be about the remains of a World War II POW camp way out in the bush, like a couple of hours away from the city, or maybe about an hour and a half. So I've been there before, it's really cool. When you think of POW camps, you don't really think of the Australian bush, but they did exist, and there, there are the remains of one near a town uh, close to Perth called Dwelling Up. So I'm hoping to film that next weekend, weather permitting, can't forget we are in the middle of winter here in Australia, but yeah, if you uh, like what I do and you like my filming style and all that sort of stuff, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Tell me what you think. I will be definitely taking feedback for the second video, which will hopefully be filming in about a week's time. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'm pretty glad that it still works and that I more or less got it back together after it'd been disassembled in a box for nearly 20 years. It's a shame about the lid, but that was a bit loud. I think we will come back to that. Regardless, thank you again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.